Thunder on Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, um, man, I just watched, uh, it's on ES News, right? You know, Ellie Setback, you know, whatever his name is, uh, uh, he had a bunch of interviews with Deontay Wilder. It's really one interview, but it's like 50 different clips or whatever, you know. Um, but he had one clip where he, uh, admitted, you know, and I knew this from Jump, and, you know, you can go ask, uh, Maxwell Bear, uh, Precise, I think I told Precise, um, because I talked to, to, to Vada and things like that. I'm not saying who at Vada or whatever, but, you know, people, and... I always knew that the Wilder Povetkin fight could have went through. It did not have to not take place. Okay, it could have went through, and if Povetkin had, you know, if later on Vada had deemed him uh, that he cheated, uh, if he won, it would have been ruled a no contest. If he lost, um, maybe it would have still been a no contest, but it probably would have just still been a win for Wilder and. Povetkin would have got punished, right? But the fight still could have happened, and Deontay Wilder admits it in one of the the one where he says Povetkin should go to jail. He should go to jail for taking what ah uh, oh man, I, I what is basically the equivalent of the shittiest PED on the market, right? And just to let you know how shitty meldonium is, we all know in American society, whether it's guys just using roids for bodybuilding, like locally, not competition, com com competition guys also, um, guys who just want to use roids for, you know, aesthetics, um, sports, or, you know, whatever, you know, the, the whole gamut, right? Uh, a buddy of mine used to use a, a site, um, I, I never used them, but I believe the site was called arcticgear.com, right, and, um, shit, maybe I shouldn't have just said that, I don't think the site's still up, I, I don't know, I hope, oh, fuck, maybe I just fucked up right there, um, <clears throat> but he would buy all his roids from there, and, uh, it was from, like, e Eastern Europe, right, uh, and we all know that the American dudes, like, these guys pay so much attention they have whole forums and communities like how we have a boxing community they have a steroid community you know and a performance enhancing drug community to communicate with each other on what's the best shit out there what can i use what can i stack with this and you know what can i stack with this to make this better or you know what two things can i mix to make up a, a ped and all that shit how can i mask such and such well blah 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 and, you know, you're noticing, guys, it, the only people that were ever really using meldonium were in Eastern Europe. Yeah, it is an Eastern Euro European drug, and it's not FDA uh, approved, so, you know, you can't get a doctor's prescription for it in the States, which is what a lot of PED users um, do. Not the, uh, probably not the you know, the the higher percentage of all of them, because most of them, buy, I'd probably say the bigger proportion um, buys it on the black market, but, you know, a lot of them get it through doctor's prescriptions at, like, anti-aging clinics and such, uh, and, but they couldn't get a prescription for meldonium in America. They would have had to have bought it illegally, right, through the internet. If meldonium was so good, or even just decent, even just decent, okay, <laughs> guys in America would be using it because the guys over there would have been talking about it to them and they would have been like oh give me that and I'm sure they a lot of I mean you know guys have known about it since you know for the longest time in the states uh, the PED users but you know I, I talked to a, a, a buddy of mine whose buddy's buddy uses meldonium um, or the what the whatever the other name of it is um but anyway um you know it's literally like when they tried to ban it they went after water like basically saying you can't ban it because it's you know basically uh, against our human rights uh to protect ourselves because it's a you know it's a cell protector um, obviously, it can push oxygen to 
parts of the muscles that aren't getting it, but also if you're a 100% healthy male, the oxygen benefits that it gives you, you're already getting anyway, and it don't give you extra. It only pushes oxygen to where it's not getting the, it, like, if you're getting a, a hundred percent of the oxygen needed in your bicep, it's not going to put extra oxygen in your bicep like blood doping would, like EP, EPO would, right? Um, meldonium don't do that. If your bicep, you know, you had some kind of disease or something where you weren't getting, you know, oxygen to all your muscles properly, it would do that. And it also protects cells from when you're training at an extremely high level. It protects, you know, the cells from being damaged or dying, okay? And they, that's what they were arguing. Like, look, we're just protecting ourselves here. Um, but... If it was even a half decent drug, don't dare try to tell me uh, Western athletes wouldn't be using it too, okay? Um, they use fucking steroids that are meant for animals for crying out loud. So don't tell me they wouldn't use meldonium if they thought it was good. And if it was good, everyone would know about it and be using it. But they're not, are they? You know? No. I mean, they're not. They're just getting doctors' prescriptions for it. Or buying it right over the counter. It's literally an over-the-counter medication in some countries. You know, if you're in Moscow, where Povetkin is, you don't even need a doctor's prescription. You just walk into a, a pharmacy and be like, give me my uh, meldonium, but they call it the uh, mel mel meldronator or whatever the other one is, but just meldonium, right? They, uh... So, it's not like... You know, and, um, <clears throat> man, I was told by one of the best minds in all, in the whole PED world that literally, exact, exact quote, I can't say who, but exact quote was, if Pavekin was going to cheat, wouldn't he take something better? Okay? And now we all know that the science is going to come back and basically clear him. Alright? And... He's gonna have to fight Pavekin, and in that same exact clip, the whole the go to jail is the title. He should go to jail. In that clip, he says he could have went through with the fight, chose not to, but he said I wanted to go through with the fight. I didn't care. I thought I could beat him anyway. But we said, well, what kind of example would we be setting if you could beat him anyway? Who cares? Your example would be I'm a fucking monster. I just beat a guy on the on, on PEDs. I'm a beast. That would be the example. You know what I mean? Look at Salido, right? Uh, he, he didn't have to fight Vargas. He could have ran from that fight and called Vargas a, a cheater and all that shit. He didn't give a flying fuck. Why? Because he's a fighter. A fighter. Fight anybody. You know? And you could be like, well, that's different. And uh, is it? Is it really? It's on the band list. I've heard that a million times, too. Well, it's on the band list. It's on the band list. But the science is basically going to be proving more likely than not. I'm not saying it's 100%, because I don't know 100%, but it's, um, you know, the last time I heard, it's it's being rolled favorably in, in Pavekin's favor. Um that he did nothing wrong so until i hear different from people uh that i talk to that's what i'm understanding and the rolling can be coming down any day now right so he and and the, obviously vada can't stop a fight the wbc can't stop a fight it's up to a, a commission to not sanction a fight in moscow Mo the fight was happening in Moscow, remember? And Ryabinsky, uh, Pavekin's promoter, dude, that guy, he, he got every connection in the world in Moscow. He would have just been like, fight's going through, and it's going through. So if Pavekin wanted it, or if Wilder wanted it so bad, like I heard um, in that vid him and 78, or 78 and Blood did together, when 78 interviewed Wilder, Wilder was saying, man, I've always wanted him, that, that, I want that fight so bad, blah, blah, blah. Well, you had him. First of all, you could have fought him in 2015 and didn't, so how'd you want him so bad? But then, uh, this time, you know, when he popped dirty once, then pissed clean the very next time. What did, what did, what did Salido do, right? <clears throat> 
he just said, I don't care, I'll fight him anyway, number one, but yeah, go ahead and run your little study. Uh, he came back, yeah, what, a, he pissed clean this time, okay, who, maybe he flushed, right? Uh, eh, who knows? And does, the point is, does it matter? Because honest, and I'm not trying to make any, you know, I'm not even going to say it, some people are you're making excuses, but... Don't ever let Wilder get caught using a PED, because he's going to look like the biggest asshole, um, you know, saying, this guy should go to jail for using uh, meldonium. Meldonium. And he didn't even fight on it. He didn't even fight. He didn't even fight. He he had meldonium in his system, so he should go to jail, right? So in other words, sniff some cocaine, you should go to jail, because that's considered a performance-enhancing drug by Vada. Uh you know, um, uh, go buy some Sudafed, pop a couple tablets of that, you should go to jail, because that's on the banned substance list uh, by, on VADA. Um, I would say marijuana, that's on WADA's list, but it's not on VADA's. Um, that is literally the only substance that VADA <laughs> refuses to put on their um, uh, performance-enhancing drugs list, uh, marijuana. Wada has it, but Vada's like, come on, that, that is no performance-enhancing drugs, so. But sanctioning bodies, or, or, or I mean commissions, when they do their test, they actually do test for that, and they will pop you for it, like Areola got popped, right? And does it, and did anyone ever, like, people were, remember Butte got busted, right? He literally got tested by USADA, passed their test, and then got busted by a fucking state commission test. The easiest test to pass in the world. So clearly USADA fucking busted him and covered it up. You know, cl clearly. Because how in the hell can the commission catch it? All right, after the fight, they boom, he popped dirty, but... He didn't pop dirty when you saw it tested him. You know, like the same fucking time. Like within the same fucking hour. You know, so that again is another red flag that you saw it as a fucking joke. But th this ain't about you saw it. But I just thought that was a little interesting there. But Wilder admitted that he could have went through with the fight that he wants so bad. And he says also that he will not be fighting Pavekin any time in the near future. So you're, we're not getting that fight. If he is rolled Mando, he is vacating. It, it, it's it's a hundred percent. I'm telling you now. Watch, because he he said in it. In the, any time in the near future, no, it's not happening anytime soon. You know. So like he basically means years down the road, maybe we'll fight. But no, we're never gonna get to see Pavek and Wilder. And the thing is. We should have, and we still should. Ah, oh, shit. It's important. Uh, but we're not going to, you know. And I'll I'll break down the the the, the uh, you know the simple uh, meldonium. You see, with with meldonium, like the 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 Vada protocol, or I should say, I guess Wada protocol it's like you know he's getting cleared all right i'll get into the i'll break it down really simple so any simpleton can understand it, it um i want to talk about some, the air I'll, I'll get i'll get back to this because the, the, this ain't about the pavekin thing actually it's more about just the areola but <clears throat> why I just want to go through a few things first, really. Like, number one, uh, real quick, um, it like I said, it's likely uh, the Pavekin is going to remain Wilder's mandatory, okay? And he's going to have to fight him. They're going to set a date. I don't know how they're going to handle it, if, if the old purse bit will stand, uh, whatever. I mean, that'll all have to get figured out, whatever, you know. But the point is he's probably going to have to, to, to still fight him. Um if they roll in Pavekin's favor. If not, then you don't have to. Whatever, that's fine. If they don't roll in his favor, it is what it is. Um, that's fine. Uh, 
you know, well, that's that's whatever, you know. But if they roll in his favor and he becomes Wilder's Mando again, Wilder cannot vacate. He gotta fucking fight the man. What he's gonna do is he's gonna vacate and go after Anthony Joshua instead. But he, in that same interview, he's talking about how he wants to become undisputed. But then said, if he has to fight, uh, if, if they don't punish Povetkin and he has to fight him, he's going to vacate. Do you want to become undisputed, or are you going to vacate one of the four belts? Like, you know, you're only going to make it harder for yourself to become undisputed, and that guy will never be fucking undisputed, first of all. Um, never in a fucking million years. Because um, he will have to get into that ring with, uh, you know, like a, a Victor Ortiz. You know, maybe him and if maybe him and Fury would if Fury beats Klitschko, uh, but uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the winner of that fight has to fight Ortiz, and I think Ortiz beats either one of them, so it would be Wilder and Ortiz, and I don't think he beats Ortiz, so I don't think he's ever going to be undisputed. But why would you give up a belt if your goal is to become undisputed? It it it's, it makes absolutely no sense. It goes. Ag Giving up a belt goes against trying to become undisputed. You don't vacate a belt if you're trying to become undisputed, all right? But anyway, all right. Now, just put it If, you know, it's first of all, Wilder even knows. Wilder's own team knows that Pavekin is likely to get cleared, and it's probably going to get cleared. That's why they're saying all this shit, to make you guys who are Wilder fans uh, justify it when he does vacate. Fuck, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's a media firestorm to make you, to make just Pavekin like, oh, he's no, fuck him, fuck him, fuck him, yeah, I'm gonna let, who cares if Wilder vacates, I don't even want to see Pavekin get a damn title shot, but yet he's just gonna get the belt anyway, you know, <laughs> you know, he's gonna fight some, uh, an easy fight, someone who he's gonna destroy for the belt, um, why would Wilder just give this man his title, when he said, for so long that that's the fight he wants, right? And he's been accused of ducking this guy for fucking ever since he had the WBC strap. <laughs> you know, since, well, not since he had the strap, but since Pavekin became his Mando, right? Because he should have fought him in 2015, but instead he ran to the WBC and said, hey, you gave Floyd two years and he didn't have to fight a Mando, so. You, I do not have to fight Pavekin right now. And they let him have another voluntary and then said, but then you got to fight Pavekin, right? So if he wanted him so bad, why didn't he just fight him then? You know? Uh, yeah. And Meldonium wasn't on the banned substance list uh, then either, right? So he wasn't a dirty fighter. Now, who says that something that both of them are taking right now that's not on the banned substance list won't be on it next year you know because go look at wada's growing banned substance list right don't tell me fighters weren't taking the you know all the shit that you know was put on it in 2015 in 2014 of course they were you know, so the new stuff they'll put on it, I don't know what it is, but the new stuff that they'll put on it in 2017, fighters are taking now. Alright, so they're all on shit. They're all on shit. The problem is, is if you're taking, like, you know, the big, big PEDs, or if you're, you know, you get blasted out the water if you're a fucking hypocrite accusing people of being cheaters and then you get caught cheating all right that's the big deal no one really cares no one ca uh, Luis Ortiz is my favorite heavyweight he got popped he's a he, he he got popped I mean he's a he's a cheat he he cheated with testosterone you know like a real PED but does that make me not like him no not at all not at all. I know at least when he fought uh, Brian Jennings, he took Vada and passed it, right? So at least he was he ain't taking it no more. So whatever, you know. Um, like uh, Sean Noon did the video, and it was like fucking seven out of the top ten heavyweights all got fucking busted taking steroids, you know, or PEDs, whatever, you know. 
or tested positive or you know whatever the he i can't remember he had the video what it was they they're they're all on this shit man it's just a matter of time before they all get caught you know uh every year a new one gets fucking busted uh or two get busted every year for crying out loud but what i want to talk about right um and i'll get back to to, to wilder wanting to fight put back in but and actually no let's just talk about that right now why the first of all why the fuck is he fighting chris areola why is he fighting chris areola like that dude is a he's a bum he wasn't a bum when he was coming up he, he wasn't nothing special but he's a bum now the guy literally just fights to get a paycheck so he can have money for food you know what i mean that's a, a fuck um, like a bunch, he wants to just make, he got money to make unlimited runs to El Polo Loco. I mean, come on. Um, it's ridiculous. I mean, the guy ain't no, <laughs> he's not a professional boxer. He's a boxer who happens to be professional, you know, happens to have a license. Um, ranked number 50. And I'll get to that. He ain't even really 50. He's really, like, outside of the top 100. And I'll explain, and you can't even argue it, right? <clears throat> but if he wanted Povetkin so bad, like he told everybody and tells everybody, right? Because actions speak louder than words. We can all agree on that, right? If he wanted him so bad, why sign a fight with Povetkin when any day... The, the ruling can come out on Pavekin, whether he did, if he did something wrong, or if he did nothing wrong, alright, Wilder's saying he should go to jail, and he should be punished for doing all this bad stuff, well, dude, the scientists, not your dumbass, not your fucking dumbass, uh, the scientists are studying him, to see if he did use it after December 31st, 2015. And if they say he didn't, you gotta fight him. You got to fight him. And if you vacate, you're a bitch. Alright, it's that simple. That simple. I don't want to hear no justifications uh, of why it's okay he vacated if Povetkin gets cleared. Right? And I don't want to hear that, you know, I'm hearing all these conspiracy theories now. Oh, it's political, it's Ryabinsky's paying people off, and blah, blah. No, they're fucking not. You know, no, it's what's going to clear them is the science and Wada's own protocol on how to, to deal with meldonium, the, the athletes who were using it, and excretion times, and, you know, the levels in their systems which I'll get to briefly, it's literally like 10 seconds to explain, but I want to talk about why is he fighting Areola, not someone better, or, or just Povetkin, he should just be waiting for the rolling, like if you really wanted this fight, you know, uh, it, 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 the rolling will be this month, the WBC said it will be this month, they will make the rolling in July, okay, so it could have been, and they never set a date, so it could have been any day. It literally, the day he signed the Areola fight, the very next day it could have been Povetkin's free to fight. Okay? And like, do, you know how pissed we all would have been that we were like, why the fuck did you just sign this fight with Chris Areola? And Chris ain't gonna be like, yeah, I'll take step aside money. He's gonna be like, no, I'm getting a title shot because Wilder's vulnerable. You know, I, I'm can't fight for a lick anymore but I, I can punch so i got a puncher's chance i'm just gonna go all out and try to finally win a title you know he ain't gonna give up his third title shot because he'll never get another one so you know if we're stuck with the fight you know uh it, it is what it is i mean unless the wbc like rolled it they, they wouldn't he'd just be fighting areola but why wouldn't he have just waited for the rolling to see if, Pave if, if to, to see if he could fight Pavekin or not, right? Why not? Why not? Wait a couple of weeks at most. What's why? Why couldn't he do that? You know, or three three weeks at most? Maybe I think it was. But also remember, it could have been any day. It can be tomorrow. We can get the rolling tomorrow. I mean, we're gonna have it in the next nine days. You know, next not eight nine days, 
So, <laughs> you know, we're going to find out. And the WBC just released their new rankings, and he's still the mandatory. I should kind of tell you something, right? You know, they already know what their ruling is going to be. They already know because the science is already done. The tests are already done. The you know the evaluation of his samples are already done. They already know what the ruling is. I don't know what what they're waiting on, but you know they have a conference scheduled for you know whenever they put it together. But it's sometime this month. Um, maybe they released the day for it, and I just haven't heard about it. I don't know, but you know. Why didn't he just wait for the rolling, and if Pavekin can fight, schedule it for, like, the very beginning of August? What's wrong with that? Because they were both in camp. You know, Wilder really didn't stop training uh, since the Spilka fight. You know, he took a little bit off, was immediately back in the gym. Uh, same goes for Pavekin. The guy had the walk fight, took a little time off, was right back in the gym. Non-stop training for both of these guys. You know, look at Tito Trinidad and B-Hop. When that fight, uh, when 9-11 happened, right? It got postponed. Fight, fights get postponed all the time. All right? They should have just treated this as a... Since Wilder didn't want to fight Povetkin when he could have, since he didn't want to, uh, they should have just treated it as a postponement because that's what it was. The fight was never off. The WBC just said it's postponed. All right. So what do you do? You 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 keep lightly training, keeping yourself where you're at. You know, right on the verge of peaking, just keeping yourself. When you find the date, then you adjust your training. And you know, they could have made it in mid-August. You know, second week of August in Moscow. Boom, done deal. Right. They you know. They, they, it's not like, then don't be like, oh, they needed promotion time and press conferences and all this. They didn't do it for the first fight. They didn't have no commercials for the first fight. No press conferences for the first fight. No fucking, it, Showtime didn't buy the first fight. So, yeah, they can still do it. All right, it, this, it would have been the exact same thing. No promotion. Or they could have still did a couple weeks of promotion, which is more than they did for the, the, the May 21st fight. Which, you know, never happened, but they never did any promotion for it, you know. Uh, and I'm not, and a little Ellie Secback interview saying, yeah, I'm going to fight Povetkin. That, that's really not promotion. I'm talking commercials and press conferences and shit like that, you know. None of that stuff. No media tours and nothing. Nothing, right? But why didn't they just schedule it for, like, August um, and give us the fans... The fight we want, and not Wilder versus the worst opponent he's fought since Jason Gavern. This is how bad this guy is. He's about the equivalent of Jason Gavern. Because if you go back and watch that fight, Jason Gavern was, that was like an even fight until he gassed. Like, fast. But remember, he wasn't in the gym for 14 months before that. He didn't even train. Like, he he didn't train one day for that fight. And was given Wilder a good fight until he gassed. Um, you know, but... And that's right before he won the title. <laughs> that's right before he won the title. But that is... This is his worst opponent since fucking Jason Gavern. So, first things first. If he really wanted Povetkin, uh, he would have waited those couple of weeks to see what the ruling was. You know? Because if Vada says he's clean and he didn't cheat and it's a, a residual trace amount and he hasn't taken it after December 31st, 2015, it's just a residual trace amount that has zero effect on uh, his ability to train harder or to fight harder. If they told Wilder that, then then there's no reason for him not to fight. And he could have immediately called up like Vada or Doc Goodman and been like, "Hey, what 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 what's with this stuff? You know, is 70 nanograms something to worry about? You know, is this a big deal?" Chances are, she would have been like, "No." Okay, no. 
I, I know the signs, and I know she goes by the signs, so I know she would have said no. And he would have been, then he could have said, okay, let's fight. But he didn't do that. He fucking hightailed it out of there so goddamn fast. You know, you didn't see fucking Salido booking back uh, to Mexico. You know, or does he live in New Mexico? No, he lives in Mexico right yet. You didn't see him booking out of the country. You know? I mean, Wilder's getting ready for a fight in Moscow, trying to get, you know, acclimated to the, the, the time, you know, the weather, the time zone, the altitude, everything. He's fucking so far away. He's like, I think, what was it? You know, two, three time zones away. He's in the UK. He's in the UK for, for training during fight week <laughs> for a fight in Moscow. And he's doing meet and greets, shaking everyone's hands. I think he was in Sheffield, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he's basically, they're building the Anthony, Anthony Joshua fight. Right? The, uh, they're, that's the fight they want. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know I, I, I'll get in, into that in another video, you know. But anyway, wh what do you think Evander Holyfield would have done in that situation? Honestly, what do you think someone like Evander Holyfield would have done in that situation? Would he have uh, booked it? Would he have booked it? And I know, like, Holyfield did his own dirt, too, so he probably wouldn't have gave a flying fuck. But even, you know, clean, before he ever moved up to heavyweight, clean Evander. You think Evander would have ran from that fight or something? You think he wouldn't have just been like, no, we're still going through it. Or, hey, w w what is this stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay, let's go through. It's not, not not major. Let's do it. Let's go. More fighting. Or at least wait till the rolling. You know? What if he was to fight? And I'm saying when he was like the undisputed champ. Let's And I know Tyson was in jail, but let's say. And, well, Tyson maybe, you know, that's too. That's, well, f actually, fuck no, Tyson. Because that would have been his career high payday. And this was Wilder's career high payday. Four, five million dollars, or he's gonna, and, and instead he's gonna fight Ariola for like seven hundred grand, if he's lucky, you know. Because what's he gonna get? Is he gonna even get a million for this fight? I don't even know what his purse is, but I can't see PBC giving up that much money, uh, honestly, you know, because they're kind of, you know, you remember it used to be they they said at the beginning every NBC headliner. Uh, every NBC primetime headliner gets a, a seven-figure payday. Well, Spence was an NBC primetime headliner versus Algeri, and they gave the kid less than a quarter million dollars. Like, I don't care who you're fighting. You said any N every NBC primetime headliner. Why the fuck did Spence get gypped so bad? You know, because clearly funds are running low and they need to cut back. So I'm not sure he's even gonna get a million for this fight, and if he even if he does get a million, he gets one million. He could have had four or five versus Pavetkin if he if he'd have just waited a couple of weeks. But Ariola is a lot easier of a fight than Pavetkin. You know what I'm saying? And with the whole drug testing shit, I was watching this one video where dude was like. You know, some say he failed, or, 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 you know, first of all, he never failed. He just tested positive for residual trace amounts, which were under uh, the illegal limit. He wasn't even, he, he couldn't, he didn't fail a test because it was such a low amount. All right, so it, it wasn't a failed test, uh, period. Right, but the guy, anyway, dude was like, some say he failed, some say, you know, he did nothing wrong. I don't know what to believe. How about you do some damn research and you'll find out? That's not hard. You know, actually, people have already done the research for you. Just watch a couple videos. And this ain't like an old video where he said it when it first happened. And I can't remember the channel where I actually put him on blast. But um, <clears throat> it was a, you know, one, there's so many channels out there nowadays. I can't keep track of them all. Um, but, you know, anyway, look, they know Wilder is likely going to have to still fight Povetkin, and, and they don't want him to, 
they don't want to lose for four for four million because if he lost, he'd get what like a little over four million when he could fight Anthony Joshua, maybe win, or you know have a better uh, I don't know maybe win or lose, but he'd still get a lot more money, right? A lot more money, um, you know. Please, and if he lost, I mean, if he if Joshua lost, if he beat Joshua, imagine what that rematch would be worth in the UK. Oh my God, it would be a huge fight. And then the the fucking rematch, the trilogy, like so. There's literally like twenty five, thirty million dollars there. You know, if they if he could beat Joshua in the first fight, if Joshua beat Wilder, I don't know if they'd even rematch. Uh, but if it, I think if Wilder beat Joshua, they they would rematch because um, it'd be too much. There's too much money on the table. There is, you know, Joshua don't need Wilder. He needs Wilder's title, but Wilder needs everything about Joshua. He needs Joshua for his name and his the money he brings and his title. All right, so even if he beat him and took that title, he's still worth more than Wilder because he has a way bigger fan base, way bigger fan base, you know. So they'd much rather go that route instead of fighting Pavekin and possibly losing for four million, you know. Um, you know, this is a business. I get that. They're looking at it that way. Um, and that's why they would rather vacate than fight Pavekin when he gets, you know, put back. If he if he get, if he gets put back as his mandatory, they'll pro they're gonna vacate. I mean, he basically just said it in the interview, you know. So you know, he needs to be punished, and and you know, if he's my mando, you know, I mean, we're we're just not fighting anytime soon, and when you. Listen to him. He's basically saying, you know, well, maybe, you know, like years down the road we'll fight or something, but not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. That to me, that at least means not your next couple of fights, and it should be in his next fight after Ariola. So you know, and he didn't say anything like that. He didn't say, well, let's let the process play out, and if they deem him, you know, to have done nothing wrong that's my next fight he's not saying that is he you see what I'm saying he's saying nothing like that all right but then they know they're probably gonna have to fight Pavekin they don't want to do that and he hasn't since way back like when when he like when I said when he baited WBC for another voluntary so he didn't have to fight Pavekin in 2015 all right now when, uh, then, you know, and, and you really look at it, I mean, maybe eight days, maybe 14 days before he finds out if he still has to fight Povetkin or not, he goes, he hurry up and scurries and signs to fight a man who admitted he doesn't deserve a title shot. But signing that fight means that what if Povetkin more than likely gets deemed as his mando they can't make it won't be like well you got you know you got three you're mandated to fight him within three months they'll be like well you get you got six months or something buys him a lot of time and maybe Pavekin will be like well I, I've been out of the ring now I want to fight maybe he loses they're like hey he lost now we don't got to fight him or hey he got a fight can I get another fight and then it keeps going you know like the, the whole walk thing you know, so there's a lot of outcomes. The fight ain't never happening, man. We're never fucking getting it now. And we could have got it. You know, think about it. When it comes back, the Pavekin did nothing wrong. And Wilder told, straight told you on camera that he could have went through with the fight and it would have been totally on the level. You know, um, I'm saying if, you know, if he was cleared and we all know he could have fought him anyway. Um, you know, on May 21st, it was Wilder's choice. He didn't fight him. He chose not to fight him. And he admits that in the video. All right. I've told people that already because I heard it from the, in the, the inside sources, but he straight up finally came out and said it. Um, but, you know, 
he said, hey, I wanted to fight him anyway. I didn't give a shit, but, you know, it's kind of the example that I was setting if I did fight him. No, yeah, and, and my Max put it best, actually, um, that, not Max Kellerman, Maxwell Bear, that if it was the perfect fight for, for uh, uh, Wilder, because if he goes in and fights him and beats Pavekin, holy shit, he just beat a guy on on PEDs, right? Because that's what everyone would say. He beat the guy on the juice. And if he loses, it's really like, well, he only lost because the guy was on the juice. So it, a, what, it really wouldn't hurt his value to, you know, his, his fan base at all. At all. If anything, it might have, it would have either made people love him way more if he won, or they would have even probably still liked him even more if he lost because they would have got that like sympathy love where they would have been like, no, nah, he got an injustice. Now I want to watch him come back because everyone loves that getting knocked down and coming back story. Come on. That's boxing, right? He had it all right in the palm of his hand and threw it all away along with four or five million bucks. You know? I mean, I, I, to me, I think it was a bitch move. I think it was a bitch move. I think he should have called up, literally, Vada, and been like, what is this stuff? Is it really anything for me to worry about? And I, I know they would have said no. And then he would have been like, okay, well, we're fighting. You, you can deal with your problems after the fight. You know, whether you get punished or not, that's I ain't worrying about that, but we're fighting. You can worry about your little problems down the road i'm not worried about that i'm just worried about the fight but he chose not to do that and instead he said i'm not fighting them and boogied back to america now but anyway he signs to fight this dude who admits that he doesn't deserve a title shot instead of waiting for the results and waiting for the report what do you think any top fighter salido didn't run you know, we know top fighters wouldn't run from shit like that. You know? Please. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Okay, let's postpone it. We'll find out what the results are. You know? Not sign another fight. Literally, like, four times your career high payday. If he won, it would have been, like, four times his career high payday, right? No one's doing that. No one. No one, man. They're going through with it. They'd be like, I don't give a fuck. I ain't even waiting for the report. Four times my career high payday. Put me in that ring right now. Not louder, though. Not louder. And, you know, get mad at me all you want. It, 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 it is what it is, in my opinion. You know, you can have yours. I can have mine. Uh, you know. And... <sighs> It's like, why why give us this shit fight, this totally shit fight, um, it, instead of giving us damn near a, a super fight? I mean, it wasn't like a, a May Packer or pay-per-view or like a super fight in that way, but, I mean, to, to Wilder, it was a super fight. Getting fucking five million if you won, that's a fucking super fight. I mean, this was the biggest heavyweight fight outside of Klitschko and Fury. The rematch, it was without a doubt the biggest heavyweight fight. You know? It was without a doubt the, you know, one of the biggest fights of the year. You know? So it was a, not a super fight, but a big, big fight. And instead of getting a big, big fight, we're getting basically a sham. Uh, a PBC total fucking showcase mismatch, um, another fucking cherry pick uh, of a voluntary. Sad, you know. This is his fourth fucking voluntary now, and he still hasn't picked anybody in the top ten. Oh, and I'll get to that, actually. I got, I got something else to talk about about that. But, you know, like, we could have got this big fight instead of this joke fight. And like roughly the the you know the same time you know like eh, I, I don't get it i don't get it at all i i just don't get it why wouldn't you have waited for the rolling and then just told pavekin hey stay in shape because if you get cleared 
you know, we're fighting on this date. They could have even scheduled the fight anyway, you know, rescheduled it for another date, like tentatively, and if all was well, then they went through, and if he got, and if they, you know, deemed that he uh, did something wrong, then the fight gets canceled. Why didn't they do that? You know? Oh, you'll have your report done in July? Okay, we're scheduling it for the end of August. The fight is happening at the end of August as long as you get cleared. If you don't get cleared, the fans get the money back for the tickets and shit and blah, blah, blah. And then the fight don't happen. What's the problem? Because Wilder's team knows he's getting cleared. They know. They they have people smart enough, regardless of the bullshit they put out to, you know, you guys and the media and all that. Um, they know what's going on. They know what's going on. And they know the science. They have people smart enough to tell them, uh, you know, what WADA's protocol is and how they're going to have to handle this situation because their own rules tell you how they're going to have to handle it. <laughs> you know? So, and other athletes have already been cleared under pretty much, like, damn near the same exact circumstances with Meldonium. By by Wada, so and Vada is you know follows Wada's protocol under this, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's all written in black and white that he's gonna get cleared. And I understand they don't hand down the punishments. The WBC could always pull some fuck shit, you know. The you know come on, you know they always could. I get that, but I again I was told from Vada, can't say who, from Vada, just someone there that the WBC is really trying to do the right thing here. They are actually going to do the right thing here. They're not going to, you know. And they were telling me, it like, look, I know it's a sanctioning body and you don't believe that because, you know, it's a fucking sanctioning body. Come on. But they're like, honestly, they're actually trying to do the right thing here. They're really going to do what they should do. They're going to do the right thing if it's a... Uh, punish him because he should be punished they'll do that um and if it's mandate that wilder fights him because he didn't do anything wrong that's what they're gonna do it all depends on what this the vada's recommendation is you know and anyone who reads the the science and the protocol already you already know what it's gonna be you know so anyway uh but what what fighter would take what fighter wouldn't wait a couple weeks for a big 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 fight and uh, and instead go take a fucking joke of a fight yeah exactly no one no no fucking real fighters like I said, would any Vander Holyfield ever do that? Would a Tyson ever do that? Would a Lennox Lewis ever do that? Would a, you know, would a Salido do that? Would a Vargas, would, you know, would a Loma? No, none of these guys would, man. Look at Loma. The guy fucking fought Salido, uh, way overweight. Um, you know, uh, uh, didn't even care. Just said, I don't care. Put, put him in the ring. You know? Put him in the ring. The belt's still on the line for me. Put him in the ring. And I know it's just a weight advantage, but that much of a weight advantage is way more, uh, di you know, like, of a, uh, uh, tipping the scales of an uh, unfair playing field. And it's way more favorable to, to Salido than Meldonium is to Pavekin, you know, in, in regards to those, their, each fight. You know, Loma went up against way bigger odds, like, or a way bigger challenge than Wilder would have if he would have just went through with the fight. You know, way bigger. You know, but Loma didn't run. He didn't run back to the Ukraine. He said, "Fuck that." The belt's still on the line. Put him in the ring. You know, come on. I mean, because that's what that's what fighters do. You know, that's what fighters do. You know, everyone knows all fighters are on shit. So it's like, who cares? He's using it as just an excuse. It's just an excuse. You know, and it's not even like it's a, a, anything. You know, uh, literally. And then, you know, people will find this all out eventually. But, you know, I understand there's a lot of, you know, fear-mongering going on and, you know, trying to 
to make this shit out like it's some sort of fucking, like the, her, I remember seeing the quote, Energize makes you fight like the Energizer Bunny. My ass it does. My ass it does. Because what, pavekin has been taking this shit his whole career. How come he wasn't fighting like the Energizer Bunny his whole career? How come he was always a four-round fighter? Why, how come Eldonium didn't help him, uh, you know, be a 12-round fighter? <laughs> oh, I thought it was uh, the, the Energizer Bunny juice. No, exactly. No, it don't do shit. It's a cell protector. All right? That's it. That's it. You know? I mean, God, when the guy, the American from the Mayo Clinic, tells you he'd be surprised if it even does as much as creatine or caffeine in terms of a performance enhancing drug that tells you everything because like i said prove that it's a performance enhancing drug even wada can't prove it go read their go read their study on it they can't even prove it they literally can't okay they put it on the list but they can't show you a drop of proof uh to to show you why, you know, to say, hey, look, this is, it's a banned substance. Look, it, 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 it helps performances. It enhances your performance. No. They have no proof because there is none. It doesn't exist. Like, literally, it don't exist. Um, there's not even, let alone a, a, a not peer-reviewed one, there's not even a, just someone that puts some bullshit out there. There's nothing out there. You know, please. I mean, and this has been known since fucking, you know, it, it became really famous with the, that tennis player, uh, Sharapovich or whatever her name was. But still, no studies. You know, uh, WADA has been studying it for one year. Uh, I, you know, I got another video coming. I'll get into all that shit anyway. I just want to talk about it. Let's just get back to this fight, you know. Um, you know, and... Uh, you know, never mind. Um, uh, if he, if Wilder doesn't vacate, they actually need to do some damn pressers. You know, that, that they 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 need to hit Moscow, hit L.A., hit New York. You know, hit the U, hit London. You know, do some actual pressers to to promote the damn fight. Put fucking commercials on Showtime. Have Showtime buy the damn fight so we can watch it without streaming it. Uh, you know, it's it just a lot of shit don't make sense. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, uh, you know, let, let's just think of some fighters. Available heavyweights. Available heavyweights uh, who deserve title shots. Okay, who deserve title shots? Because fucking Areola sure as hell don't. Um, uh, Pulev just fought at the beginning of May. Uh, who knows? Maybe if Wilder called him and said, "I'll give you an eight-week camp," he would have taken it. Uh, but it, it, you know, it has to be you know eight weeks from and two weeks past the Areola fight or whatever. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he would have. But And everyone keeps saying, well, he, it's it's who we could get on short notice. It's who we could get on short notice. There's two things to that. I'll get to the second one in a bit. But the first one is, why does it have to be on short notice? Why, when they scheduled the date, couldn't they have just made it a couple extra weeks past? You know, or changed the date? Why does it have to be on short notice? Oh, so his opponent can't get a training camp, and he's been in training for fucking months already. Oh, that's why. That's right. Yeah, okay, I get you. I get you. And they get to go back to fighting on PBC, and, you know, they probably won't even be using VADA testing. I don't even know if they will be. Um, I'm very curious about that. Are they going to be using VADA testing for this Areola fight? Because I haven't heard about it yet. Are they testing um, Wilder and Areola? Has anyone heard about that? I haven't. Has anyone else? I'm going to have to contact them and ask that, actually. 
because that's going to be really fucked up if if they're not. Uh, it's going to be really suspicious too. Um, but uh, you got Pulev, possible, right? Possible. I mean, I, I think he would take it. You know, because like I said, Wilder is a vulnerable heavyweight. Heavyweights are licking their chops with that guy, man. After Spilka, you saw every heavyweight from Lewis to Tyson to Holyfield just have nothing good to say about him. Nothing. And it ain't jealousy. They'll, they'll prob give huge props to every other fighter, right? But to him, they're just like, eh. You know, like they are wishing. They're, they're like, like Dwyer said, they were all wished, like, damn, maybe I should make a comeback, man. Because I, I can probably get that guy. Even if I'm 50, I can still fuck that kid up. You know? And, you know, Pulev is a blue chip amateur. Basically meddled in, not gold, but basically meddled in damn, like, probably 90% of every international amateur tournament he ever entered. I mean, the dude's a monster. Monster. Uh, and then he reaches, you know, the pinnacle of the heavyweight division. You know, not the pinnacle, but right next to it. He didn't win the the, the, the heavyweight title fight, but he's a monster. Um, I think he, I favor him over Klitschko. Or, I mean, I favor him over Wilder. Um, so I think he probably would take the fight. He might even take it on fucking short notice, you know. Uh, who knows? But, all right, we got Pulev. Anyway, Pulev. Who else is there? Um, uh... And, you know, you can be like, well, who, who who says he didn't reach out to these guys? You know damn well that if he reached out to anyone outside of Areola and they turned it down, we would have heard about it either from Wilder, DeBella, someone on Wilder's team. Somebody would have been bragging that so-and-so ducked Wilder. We all know that. We know that. All right? Or, you know, reporters would have got word that, that camps are in talks and all that shit. He reached out to nobody. So don't say, it's the best he could get on short notice. He didn't try to get anyone else. So don't tell me that's the best he could get. Bullshit. You're telling me fucking Luis Ortiz wouldn't have accepted that fight on short notice. Are you kidding me? I saw him in an interview. Uh, I told you he was at the airport... Like two or three weeks before uh, he he signed uh, Wilder signed the Chris Ariola fight, dude. The area or, or uh, Ortiz was jacked, like jacked, fucking boom, ripped, ready to go. Um, he would have just had to hit the gym, work on his conditioning, you know, get his conditioning up, and work on a game plan because he looks like he's in the gym, so he's ready to go. Um, I guarantee he would have took a title shot on short notice. Um, don't, like, don't even dare try to convince me that he wouldn't have. Um, and he said he wanted Wilder at, at, on, on, during that interview. So, you know, it's not that he said he would take him on short notice or anything, but you, you know he would. You know he would. If you know Ortiz, you know damn well he would. And don't say, well, no, he wouldn't because he's in the WBA thing. Yeah, he'd much rather go fight fucking Frezzo Kendo in a fucking eliminator than go fight Deontay Wilder for a career high payday and a world title shot. Yeah, I'm so sure of that. Yeah, yeah, please. And he, and Ortiz knows he will destroy fucking Wilder. Destroy him. So th th he would take that fight like that. Because what kind of shape does he have to be in? Really? How long's it going? I mean, how long would an Ortiz Wilder fight really last? You know, I mean, even if Wilder won, it ain't going long. You know, it's going to be uh, an early knockout from one of them. 90% chance Wilder uh, gets knocked the fuck out early. You know, fifth, sixth round tops. So what's he got to be in shape for? Uh, an eight, nine round fight? You know? I think he can manage that in six weeks. Easy. Easy breezy. And again, why does it have to be six weeks? If it's a fucking Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz, which is the sec it would be the second biggest heavyweight fight this year. Okay? Uh, the second biggest heavyweight fight this year. 
why wouldn't they just be like, no, we have a huge fight here. All right, we're going to give both guys full camps reschedule it. <laughs> just push the date back two weeks. What the fuck is the problem there? People act like that. Can't be done. Like, it hasn't been done five million times just in the last 30 years of boxing. You know what I mean? Please, man. People come up with some fucking bullshit excuses to fucking justify their boy fighting a bum. You know? And this ain't, like... He's fighting a, a bum because it's a mandatory, or he's fighting a bum because he went down the list and no one good would fight him. No, he went after and handpicked a bum. The first guy he went after was a PBC heavyweight who's fucking trash, right? Please send me some articles of him reaching out to other fighters. Some stories of him reaching out to other fighters. Interviews about fighters saying they got reached out to. Promoters saying their fighter was reached out to or they got called about a possible fight with one of their heavyweights. Please send me those links. Oh, that's right. You can't because it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he fucking chose a fucking bum. Hand picked the bum. Not because the best wouldn't fight him. No. Just because he wanted to fight a bum. You know? That's all. You know, big fucking fat slob. That's the reason. A you know, to him, a short little fat fuck. You know, who is not taking boxing seriously anymore. He's just going through the motions, fighting for money, and that's it. That is it. You know, please. Um, the guy was actually going to get a title shot. Um... What was it? The Harper fight, maybe, I think it was? Or was it the Cassie fight? And he straight up said it after it. I don't even deserve a title shot. I'm, I'm fucking trash. Because he knew he like he lost. He's lost four of his last five fucking fights. And he's getting a title shot. Now, obviously, he didn't lose them all because PBC gave him the give fucking decisions. But he lost four of his last five. You know, please. But Luis, Luis Ortiz, all right, the most deserving contender to get a world title shot. Didn't reach out to him. Didn't reach out to him, you know. And he hasn't fought since first week of March. So, you know, he's ready. He, it's time for him to get back in the fucking ring. He would have been a per it would have been perfect timing. Perfect timing and this would have been the best chance for or for for wilder to ever fight ortiz because he'd get him on short notice uh, or they could have just actually done it real and actually promoted the damn fight and had full camps but ortiz would have taken it on short notice um and you know it, ortiz ha would have a short camp uh and Wilder's been in training for a long time. Yeah, for a different style, but he's in great shape. So the next six weeks, they just work on new, a new, their new game plan while staying in great shape. He'd be at his best. He'd be at 100%, and Ortiz would be at, like, 80%. You know? So he doesn't even have to fight 100% Luis Ortiz. That's the best Ortiz he'll... That's the best chance he'll ever have at beating Ortiz. And he still don't even try to do it. You know, like, please, man. But, but we don't know why. You know, we don't know why. It's because fucking Ortiz would knock Wilder into a coma. He, he just destroyed that dude, man. Please, Wilder... Ortiz can take a punch... Okay, he got a good chin. Wilder, suspect chin. Alright. And you got Urkan Tepper. Uh, Urkan Tepper. Uh, yeah, he's free. He's free. Um, Brian Jennings. What they, they were talking about Brian Jennings before instead of fucking Spilka, right? Uh, instead of Spilka. Why not fight Brian Jennings now? I'm sure both of the... All these guys would take it on short notice. Or just... Push the fucking date back two weeks. Why do people think that's impossible or something? Like, well, Ariel is the only guy that would take it on five, six weeks notice. Says who? Says who? Did they reach out to Ortiz? Did he say no? 
Did Erkan Tepper say no? Did Pulev say no? Did Jennings say no? Did fucking uh, uh, Jarrell Miller say no? Did Andy, Ru Andy Ruiz Jr. say no? No! 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 None of them said no. You know why? Because they never fucking reached out to him to ask him if they would take it on short notice. You know? So quit making that fucking bullshit excuse up. It's an excuse. That's all it is. It's not a reason. It's an excuse. Alright. Now, uh, where was I? Brian Jennings. Oh, yeah, I mean, Brian Jennings. Dude, that'd be a good fight. And that'd be a legit dude for Wilder to fight. Uh, I'm not sure if he's a top 10 type guy, if he's a top, like a ring top 10 heavyweight. I don't think he is. But he's a top 15 type. That's a respectable opponent. Uh, Jennings would be a respectable opponent, right? Um, literally, when we heard the talks that he was fighting Jennings, how many people said, nah, -uh. you're fighting, no way. I don't even believe it. I don't believe it. Wilder would never get in a fucking ring with a fighter like Jennings. And Jennings ain't shit, right? And there, how many people said, that's total bullshit? And then people said, no, look, they're really thinking about that fight. And people were like, whoa, props to Wilder. Oh, guess what? It, it was a joke. It never, ever was, ne it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so people were dead right. People were right. He wasn't going to fight a guy like that. You know? He wasn't going to fight a fucking Bryant Jennings. And again, Bryant Jennings is nothing special. You know? He's just a, a solid heavyweight. A solid heavyweight contender. Respectable heavyweight contender. He don't fight them type of guys. He don't fight respectable heavyweight contenders. He, this is going to be his fourth voluntary defense. And he didn't pick one dude inside the top 20, top 15, top 10. You know? Come on, man. And he ain't being avoided. Wilder ain't a ducked fighter. Like, people don't avoid Wilder. He's not one of the most scary guys in boxing or something. Give me a fucking break, you know? He's he's no fucking Keith Thurman. He's no Earl Spence. He's no Triple G. He's no Kovalev. He's no Lomachenko. He ain't none of them guys, you know, or nothing like that. He is a vulnerable fighter. Guys who, they're like licking their chops to get in the ring with him. He's the, the easiest belt holder to fight. You got to worry about one punch, you know? Just keep stay the... You know, keep your eye on that fucking right hand and attack because he has no defense just attack 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 and hey and the longer it goes the better it is for you you know uh someone just oh shit i want to give him a shout out but who the hell was that um oh uh i don't know how to say this uh Fur furza 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 latina um for Fiorza, Forza, Latina, whatever, uh, shout out, uh, he, he did a video on, um, uh, this fight, and he was talking about the Duopas fight, right, and how Duopas literally had one punch, a jab, the guy couldn't throw a right hand, couldn't throw a left hook, couldn't throw a body shot, couldn't throw an uppercut, just jab, 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 over and over, and he did good. I mean, he he almost got the fight stopped. Like if Wilder was the guy being was the guy brought in, and uh, a dual pass was the PBC house fighter, the fight would have been stopped. Cause we all know PBC loves those early stoppages for their guy, right? Um, they would have been like, "Oh, fight his his eyes closed, fight's over," you know. But I don't think it should have been stopped. I'm not saying that. I said, or I said early stoppage, remember? So, but yeah, what he said though, and shout out to him, you know, this is his thing, and it it was a great point. He fought a guy who had one punch, and the guy had success with it all night long. Like, what round, what fucking round did that fight end? Like, the 11th or something? Um, literally, just fucking smashed his face with that jab all night long it shows and as he as he said this is what you know he this is credit to him this is his words i'm stealing them borrowing them whatever you know but i'm giving credit uh 
Wilder can't adapt. It show right, right there. He couldn't even adapt to just a guy with one punch. A guy who is one-dimensional and only has one punch. He couldn't adapt. He just kept getting battered in the fucking face by that damn jab. He couldn't just slip the jab and start banging him. Slip it. Whap. Slip it. Slip it. Boom. Nothing. Couldn't even just out-jab him. No. Instead, he got his fucking face bashed in from a jab. From an actual Eurobum. From an actual Eurobum. Somebody that no one ever heard of. Right? And the guys who say they did hear of him, it's like, no, you fucking didn't. Like, maybe scrolling through Box Rec, you've seen his name before or something like that. But, like, you never fucking watched him fight. You never heard of him. You might have seen his name on the schedule or something like that. But you didn't know who he was. No one did. You know, please. I'd be. There might be one. YTBC channel who actually knew who Duo Boss was. If anyone, it would probably be like Mr. Boxing today. Uh, shout out. Or like someone from whatever fucking country he was from. Like if there's a channel from over there, they might have knew about him, but nobody else, you know. I'm talking, even the, the, you know, the whole, all the Showtime people, the PBC people, and no one knew who the fuck he was. They just pulled this guy out of the fucking blue. You know, out of and and he gave the the heavyweight champ, the heavyweight titleist, a run for his money with one punch, one fucking punch. It shows you, like he, Latina said, Fierzo Latina said, the guy couldn't even adapt to that. He can't adapt, right? He doesn't have multiple dimensions. He can't adapt. What 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 would he have done? I mean, he would have got his, he would have got knocked out if fucking uh, Dual Pass had just a good straight right, just a good two, and he would have won that damn fight. A good, powerful, legit heavyweight two straight right, he would have knocked fucking Wilder out. He would have, because he had his eye closed and he could have just jab, jab, bop, snuck it right in there. Eventually, he would have lined his ass right up, but he couldn't even throw a two. <laughs> uh, anyway, um. Yeah, I was talking about guys. Uh, guys, you can fight. Uh, what about a dude like um, uh, Trevor Bryan? Trevor Bryan, right? Not, not all that, right? Like he hasn't done much yet, but, but he's young, he's hungry, uh, works hard, stays in shape. Uh, as far as I know, I've I, I always see him in shape. He's undefeated. Uh, he beat fucking Derek Rossi in his last fight. Um, shit, uh, at least he isn't a washed up contender, a washed up contender who only gets in the ring to get paid to get whooped. So like I said, he gets spending cash for fucking late night runs to El Polo Loco. You know, that's it. That's why this guy fucking fights. I mean, it, it's a joke, you know. Uh, uh, the lawsuit with Aram, that that's over, right? Uh, Andy, like I said, Andy Ruiz Jr., why not go for him? Why not hit him up at least and ask? That's all I'm saying is ask some of these guys. If they all said no and shit, then yeah, okay, I get it. You got you got to do what you got to do, right? You're getting a ring, you know. I'd still would say don't fight Ariola until you find out if Pavet can, can fight or not. Um, but, you know, you at least try to fight other fighters, man. Because Ariola is literally like the 75th ranked heavyweight. On Bobtrek, he's 50, but he's much lower than that, and like I said, I'll explain that. My belief in that is rock fucking solid. Um, you know, it's like... <laughs> the, the, um... Uh, oh, the, the, the lawsuit, right? The lawsuit, um... Why not make that the first fight? See if, you know, reach out to, to Ruiz Jr. Give, give it. He's always in gym. You know, he's training constantly. He's an actual, you know, consummate professional. So he's probably ready to go on short notice like that. Call him up. Boom. Remember? Like, don't act like great fighters don't take fucking championship fights on short notice. 
Remember Pacquiao and Ledwaba? Ten days notice. And beat the baddest man at 122. Not a vulnerable fighter at 122. The baddest man at 22. Ten days notice. So yeah, you can get good fighters to step into the fucking ring on short notice. Um, and that was, you know, his first real big fight, you know, breakout fight in America. He's obviously was lineal champion before that at flyweight and things, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, none of them guys, he'll fight though. You know, he only fights fucking no hopers. That's all he fights is no hopers, man. It's like, why am I even going to watch this fight? I'm not watching it, first of all. It's, it's a total waste of my time. It's like fucking watching the Ward Brand fight that we got now, too. Another fucking joke of a fight. I mean, it really, like, and, and you got the Kovala fight penciled in, too, and it really makes you wonder, like, is that fight even going to happen? How's Brain getting them ready? You know, the two, I hear about two shit fights, and then I hear that, that Thurman's car accident injury is acting up again, and the fight might, the Porter fight might be in jeopardy. Uh, that fight might be off or some bullshit. So, uh, you know, I mean, man, what the fuck is wrong with fighters nowadays? I mean, and I'm going to do a video on that Thurman Porter thing. I'm going to try to hurry up and gather as much info as I can. <clears throat> and shout out Chip, by the way, my dude. Um, but, uh, He fights no hopers and landscapers, actually. Right? Jason Gavin. Uh, yeah. No hopers and fucking landscapers. That's what he fights. But let's, um... Or guys who come to take dives, like Malik Scott. Just, you know, he fights no hopers, landscapers, and guys there to take dives. Which is probably what Chris Ariola is going to do. Now, who knows? Maybe they're going to say, hey, you got to take a beating. you got to make it look good. Um, we can't have another Malik Scott situation. But all you got to do is take one flush on the jaw and just fall the fuck down, and he gets his money. But I don't know. Maybe he'll come and just go all out for one round. And if, you know, may, may, maybe he can stop him, stop Wilder in one round. Just attack, attack, attack all three minutes of one round. If you don't get him, then, yeah, you get knocked out in probably the next round. Because you're already going to be, he'll be gassed the fucking hell and back by then. Uh, he's been out of the ring for fucking eight months just doing nothing, you know. But, you know, like I said before, eating fucking steak and cheese hoagies. He goes to the subway, buys like a four foot hoagie, takes it with no veggies, just fucking meat and extra cheese with extra cheese and extra cheese and extra cheese. Takes that hoagie to Mickey D's, buys fucking 420 piece nuggets spreads them out all over the hoagie then drives to El Polo Loco gets fucking seven burritos and lines them up down the hoagie and then I'm sure with the fucking how fat that fucker is he got an industrial size um you know uh, uh um oh my god an industrial size uh deep fryer in his house right so he takes a fucking four foot hoagie and deep fries that bitch and that's what he eats for breakfast Right, that, that's just breakfast. Breakfast, okay. That's that's the kind of shape this guy's in. Have you seen him lately? He's a slob, okay, a slob. Remember when I said before when these guys and you know pe fam people in Alabama want to support you know Wilder, right? So they're like, yeah, we got a heavyweight champ from our state, yeah. And they go to this fight. They're like, we're going to a heavyweight title fight. To them, it's like they're going to like. Ollie Frazier one and shit, right? They're all dressed up, great night out. They get to the, you know, get to the event, see the couple undercard fights, you know, and then they're in the ring and they're looking at Wilder. The dude's fucking like seven foot tall, built like a fucking brick shit house. And then across the ring, you got this little fat fuck, you know. Not even his arms have a, any definition. So don't count his chest, please. I mean, you ain't gonna find definition anywhere in this man. Not even his calves have the His fucking calves have fucking fat hanging off of him. You know what I mean? That's how fat the dude is. And no disrespect to fat people. I'm just shitting on Chris Ariola. Um, you know, but... <laughs> but for real! 
Like, it's like, what kind of, they're like, well, man, I mean, what, what, damn, I just spent all this money for front row tickets to, what the fuck, how did this, this guy's good, you know, this guy's good, you know, and then they ask around and they're like, oh, wow, this guy's like the worst guy in the world, whoa, damn, damn, thanks, Deontay, you know, I didn't know much about boxing, but I'm never coming to one of your fucking fights again, just stole my money. You know, made me give you fucking five hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, whatever the hell they. I don't even know. They probably give the tickets away for free, um, but you know, one iota type shit with PVC. But still, you know, someone's paying for the people pay for some of the tickets, so they get ripped off. And you know, it's like you're looking over here. There's like a Greek god, and over here there's just like a fucking a pudding cup. You know, fucking fun pack. You know. It's, not a six pack, fuck a fun pack. Alright, that is Maxwell Bear right there. We're gonna do a hangout later. Uh, anyway, uh, fucking guys, he could have fought. Other guys, he could have fought. Um, I gotta wrap this up real quick. Alright, alright. Um, who was the last one? Brian Jennings? No, no, I was talking about Andy Ruiz Jr. Uh,. Yeah, I mean, all those guys are too good, actually. The guys like Erkan Tepper and Brian Jennings and Pulev and, you know, waiting for Povetkin. Those are all dangerous fights. So let's kind of lower the standards just a bit. Just a bit. Um, I mean, dude, you got Ustinov? What about Ustinov? He's free. He don't got a fight scheduled, as far as I know, anyway. Is he still tough? How about Huey Fury? Huey Fury. How about Huey fucking Fury? Imagine if Wilder beat Huey Fury. Imagine what that would do for the Tyson Fury versus Wilder fight. Ooh, big brother coming to get revenge. I'd make it worth even more money. Why not go after Huey Fury? Alright, why not? Why not? You know, and the Furies already made it clear they don't even care about belts. It's just about beating dudes up and collecting cash. So, you know, like, uh, what did uh, Fury said? He just said, I'll, 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 after I beat Joshua, he can keep the IBF belt. I don't even care, you know. And he said before, he don't care about none of the belts. You know, he is the king, and he just wants to fight the best. So, you know, I, I, I can respect at least, like, he don't want to become undisputed. I wish he did, but, you know... <clears throat> he's more interested in being like, why do I got to fight Glasgow, you know, or someone like that, you know, um, when I, I, I can go over here and, you know, fight a, a Luis Ortiz or for way more money and it, people would rather see it. So I respect that too. You know, at least he's honest about it and not just like bullshitting us and like trying to duck fighters and giving us excuses on why he's not going after guys. No, he just wants to kick ass and make money. And he's saying if he loses, he retires, but I, I highly doubt that because that guy brings too much money. But why not go after fucking Hue, uh, Huey, uh, Huey Fury? Because he got a, a, a fight penciled in for the very first... It's like the very, the very beginning of August. I don't remember the date. But it's the very beginning of fucking August. It's in, it says like TBA. It's somewhere in the UK. Um... But I guarantee you, if they told him, if they said, hey, come to fucking uh, America for a title shot, he would. Or, what, Wilder can't travel? And if he wouldn't, then you get to say, hey, Tyson, I punked your little brother, bitch. But they didn't even try to make the fight. Like, Huey's, Huey, it, when he signed the Areola fight, Huey was looking for an opponent. You know, the, don't tell me they didn't think, oh, that'd be great, great promotion, if we could beat them. But Huey ain't that good, you know, and they still think that's too risky. It's too risky, you know. But, you know, some people think uh, Deontay Wilder is the baddest motherfucker on earth, right? Yeah, okay, okay, um... There, I, I guarantee you, you sick with fucking, well, what's he have, uh, in 10 fights? I guarantee you, uh, he would beat the brakes off of fucking Deontay Wilder. Beat the brakes off of him. 
I don't know about like Luis Ortiz and the other heavyweights, but I guarantee he fucks Deontay Wilder up. You know, like talented guys are gonna beat him. All right, that's it, plain and simple. And Huey Fury isn't all that talented, but he's too big of a risk apparently because they didn't even try to make that fight. And that'd be great promotion, great. You know, um, and oh wait, you know, fucking uh, Huey Fury. Um, just beat Fred Cassie, who beat Ariola, uh, and, and he beat Cassie fucking with ease. Well, not with ease, but he fucking beat him clearly. I mean, he beat him clean, clearly, and Ariola lost, lost. Like I watched that fight and was like, damn, they just robbed that dude bad. They robbed Cassie bad. That was a robbery. Like, it was, it was, Cassie won, clearly, man. Um, I, it was ridiculous, right? And, uh, so, Huey beat Cassie easily, and Cassie beat Ariola easily, and he beat fucking weak-ass Dominic Brazil! Alright? The, 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 um, the, the dude Josh, AJ's fighting. Um, so yeah, I mean, damn, I guess even Huey's too tough, um, for Deontay Wilder. Even fucking Little Fury. Little Fury, you know? <laughs> Little Fury, punk Wilder. Um, dude, he, it's, it's so pathetic that they're picking Areola. Like, there's few, yo, one of the funniest things. I got to give a shout out to Maxwell Bear. He he said this. Um, look, Sean Newton, and, and shout out Sean Newton too. He never criticizes any fights, right? The guy literally fucking, uh, 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 you know, talked up and said how great of a fight um, Canelo Khan was in every fight. He never criticizes any fight any fighter for picking anyone or fighting anyone. The, the, the first fight, I think, I, it, it, it is the first fight I've ever seen him criticize. And it, he kind of criticized this fight. Areola versus Wilder. That's how bad it is. If Sh like, Sean Newton don't criticize fights. He don't. And he did. He criticized this one. That lets you know how bad it is. When even Sean Newton's like, eh... You know, uh, what the fuck is this fight for? That's when you know it's a bad, bad fucking fight. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and if you think Ariola's a good opponent, like, do you, like, do you know anything about his career? I mean, what, and, and, you know, I imagine him. You know, and the funny thing is, he might just knock himself out in the first round with his own titty. You know, like I was t talking to Max about this, the way we were just making jokes and shit. And like, I mean, this is like, you know, it's a f true. Like, the dude might come out, try to get up on his toes and look pretty, because, you know, Ollie just passed. He might try to do a little, you know, Ollie shuffle. Whap, whap. Areola gets knocked out by his own Areola gets one tooed by his own titties when he's bouncing around them shits be like bong bong you know just like when uh when Molina was fighting dancing around bong bong you know big old titties flopping around bouncing everywhere right he's gonna fucking low blow himself with his own fucking gut cause this shit hangs so low the ref ain't gonna know whether to give him a fucking uh, a five minute break or take a point away from low blowing someone you know what I mean he's gonna have to be like what do I do what do I do commissioner commissioner do I do I give him fucking five minutes or do I take a point away you know Ariola is <laughs> Ariola is that's my prediction Ariola gets knocked out by his own Ariola that's my prediction alright that's my prediction but do you know anything about Ariola's career like Ariola's last fight, right? Um, he got a majority decision in, which he lost, in my opinion. In my opinion, I thought he lost. Um, but it was, it was ruled a no contest, though. 
because of the areola field for fucking smoking bud. And, um, you know, it, so I guess he, he should be in jail, right? Because, hey, all I heard on so many of your dumb fucking videos was, well, it's on the banned substance list, so, you know, he should be in, he should be in trouble. They got marijuana on there, dude. So don't be like, well, just because meldonium's on the list. Obviously, it's a performance-enhancing drug. They got marijuana on it. All right. I used to get high, uh, smoke weed all the time and go to the boxing gym. It did not help. It didn't really hurt either, but it didn't fucking help. You know, it didn't put me in the zone or anything. It didn't fucking, it didn't hurt. Uh, but it didn't help. That's for damn sure. Um, but it's on, it's on WADA's ban list. Like I said, WADA don't, they're like, that is no performance enhancing drug. But the commissions, the state commissions still test for, you know, just drug, street drugs and shit. And that is one that they test for. And if you, you know, pop dirty for it, uh, yeah. You can get punished, you know, and the fight got ruled in no contest uh, because he got popped for for marijuana. But hey, it's a it's a banned substance. It's a performance enhancing drug, according to WADA. All right. So all you guys who were like, well, I don't know if it's really does anything or not, but WADA put it on the list, so it, it must be. So I guess weed is too, then, huh? Right? And I guess. Ariola should be in prison getting his titties sucked on by some big fucking faggot ass dude up in the jail cells, right? Right? Because, yes, he would be treated like a bitch with them kind of titties. They'd be all up on them big breasts, you know? He'd, yeah, yeah, please. I mean, they'd be like, I don't care. Don't say he can fight. He wouldn't be a bitch. Shit. Shit. You know, he's only one man, and they like tits. On a man or a woman, and he got some. You know, they'd be feeding him Snickers and honey buns all fucking day long, trying to get them titties bigger, right? Smuggling in hormone pills from the guards, giving them to his ass. Shit, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was uh, <clears throat> that was uh, tra tra Travis Kaufman. That's who. You, th that's that was the no contest fight, right? Yeah, yeah. Travis Kaufman. Uh, I thought he lost the fight. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was, eh, it was close. Um, I, 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 gave, I gave it to Travis Kaufman, though. Um, you know, what are, when you really think about it, what are, what are, Areola's best wins of his entire career. His entire career. Not this Areola. Not this just slog. This fucking Jabba the Hutt. Fuck it. This fucking just Jabba the Hutt. Just, God, I'm like, oh my God, he disgusts me, man. He should just retire. I thought he was going to retire. Um, but, you know, he needs money for El Polo Loco. You know, he's, he's addicted to this shit, right? A bunch of fucking sticky icky and El Polo Loco, right? Smoke weed all day and make runs to El Polo Loco. Um, but he, uh, his best wins, what are they? I mean, I, he beat Molina. He beat Molina. Okay, the same one that Deontay Wilder beat. Um, dude, that's one of his top three best wins of his career. Uh, actually, the other the other two, Brian Minto, who was at the end of his rope fighting at heavyweight. Um, he had lost something like fucking ten of his last fifteen fights or something, and in, in the when. Uh, uh, Areola fought him. Not at the end of that run, but, you know, he was one of those losses out of those, you know, 10 out of his last 15 fights. Areola was one of those guys that beat him. And that's one of his best wins. One of his top three wins of his career. And Jamil McCline. That's the only other one. Jamil McCline. Uh, and Jamil McCline was at the end of his road. He had lost... He was on, uh, that was a long time ago. I, I I was really familiar with Brian Minto. I can't remember. 
McCline. I know he was at the end of his career and he lost more than he was losing more than he was winning. That's a fucking fact. When uh, Molina fought him, um, but I don't know if Molina might have been like one of those very first losses or one of the last losses. I don't know, but yeah, an old, a washed up Jamil McCline, uh, washed up Brian Minto, and Molina. His best wins of his fucking career. And the sad part is, that might be better than Wilder's three best wins. Spilka, Stavern, Spilka, Stavern, August, uh, Molina? Uh, uh, fuck, I mean, that's pretty close, honestly. Ugh. You know, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, man. That's pretty bad. You tell me what you think Wilder's. That's what, Please tell me what you think Wilder's three best wins are. Then what, who you think Ariola's three best wins are. And... Whose three do you think are better? Please put that in the comments. Please, please, please. Uh, you know, please, please. Uh, I want to see what people got to say about that one. I'm curious. But this motherfucker lost four of his last five, man. Four, he lost four of his last five fights. What the fuck is a guy like that getting a title shot for? I don't care if he got the gift decision. That, that, I don't, I don't, that don't matter, man. He lost. Alright? He lost. And, th oh, since we're talking about his wins, who who all whooped his ass, right? He's just been, he looked Kaufman, uh, Cassie, fucking Harper, um, they all just been whooping him up. Um, Stavern twice. He had two shots at Stavern, who was really, you know, I mean, let's be real, he was never anything more than a journeyman. Like, yes, he did grab up a title, because all he had to do was beat a guy who ain't never beat nobody, Areola. So, you know, he's a journeyman, you know? He's a good journeyman. He's a tough dude, you know? he He's a fringe contender, I guess. Ah, yeah, fringe contender, you know? Um, you know, if, if Vitaly, you know, had a couple more years in him or something, like, obviously he would have never touched a belt in his life. Like, the guy couldn't have, neither one, he would have, dude, neither one of them could have fucking beat, uh, I mean, shit, Vitaly did, did beat the fucking piss out of Areola, I and mean, he would have did the same thing to Stavern, but, yeah, um, he lost to Kl uh, Vitaly Klitschko, um, uh, who else beat him? He got another loss. He got another, oh, Thomas Adamek, he lost fucking Thomas Adamek. You know, so Stavern, he lost to Stavern two times. He had two chances to beat that motherfucker. Couldn't do it. Uh, lost to Adamak. Lost to Klitschko. Um, just lost to Kaufman and Cassie and Harper. Did, did, four of his last five. Did he lose five of his last six? Because Kaufman, Cassie, Harper... And two Stavarns. That's five. And then he beat that fucking, like, Smith dude and knocked him out in the first round in between the Smith fights. So did he... He actually... I think he might have lost five of his last six. I mean, maybe his... It's, it's four of his last five or five of his last six. Um, in my opinion. Obviously, he got decisions on some of them. But in my opinion, Cassie beat him. In my opinion, Horrible beat him. Um, and I thought I thought Coffin beat him too. So you know, take it however you want it. You can, you know, if you, yeah. Uh, he sucks. He's trash. He's going through the motions. He's done. He's done. He's out of it mentally, spiritually, physically. He's gone. He's not in this game no more. He's strictly in it for that payday. Um, I mean, but there you go, man. That is the man's career that Wilder chose to fight. Hand picked to fight. Motherfucker. Damn, instead of hit, hitting <laughs> empty recycling bin, 
I deleted my icon for my recycling bin. I gotta go get it back up, dumbass. I do that shit all the time. Anyway, uh, that's the guy that Wilder handpicked. That's the man. Terrible, right? Right? You can't say it ain't. You can't. I mean, it's a sham, it's a joke. It's on the verge of being criminal, man. This fight shouldn't even be sanctioned. A heavyweight champ should never be able to fight somebody who was like the the 75th best fucking heavyweight and who is not like on the come up or anything. He's completely on the decline. On the decline. And he was never shit in his prime anyway. You know, let's face it, you just saw his best wins and his losses, you know, it is what it is, he he wasn't shit, he was a good fighter, but couldn't do anything, you know, he's a good fighter in his prime, but couldn't get over the hump, and then once he couldn't get over the hump, <laughs> straight downhill, he never said, well, I gotta buckle down and actually listen to people saying, quit fucking eating and quit fucking drinking Coronas, you fat bastard. No, he couldn't listen to him. Maybe if he did buckle down, he actually would have beat Stavern the, the very first time they fought. You know, they wouldn't have had to have, to have a draw and rematch. He would have just whooped him the first time if he would have just buckled down when people were telling him to. You know, but he's not that type of fighter. You know? He's like, he's worse than the heavyweight Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios was actually successful at the lower weights. You know, I'm thinking welterweight Rios, but Rios was, yeah, successful. I mean, shit, champion. But, uh, I mean, uh, it's it's just sickening, man. It's sickening what the, the, I don't know how fights like this get sanctioned. I don't. I really, really don't. This isn't even a real title defense to me. To me, it's it's like a a title defense. You know what I mean? And uh, I only went over a few heavyweights. There's more. You know, there's more more deserving heavyweights out there than Ariola. There's a bunch that would have taken the fight, but he reached out to none of them. He went after a guy who uh, uh, was. Uh, you know, exactly what he wanted. A guy who was going to come and he knows his role. He knows his role. I wouldn't doubt Al Heyman sat down with the guy and said, look, we're going to give you a payday, but you ain't beating, you ain't beating our guy because we're going to make money off of him. We can't make money off you. We can make money off him. So go in, make it look good, make it look like you're trying, then fall down. You know, when he cracks you with a good shot, put your hands down, and then let him whack you. You know, take a good shot for us. Take one for the team, buddy. You know, or else you're getting 40 grand to fight Cassie again. Okay, boss, I'll do it. That's it. You know, that's how the fight was fucking made. You know, um, that, you know, and that they were like, we can't put Wilder in with anybody good because there's a good chance he'll lose to him. Did you just see the Spilko fight? You know? God, we thought that was a safe one. We got a really stoop low this time. <sighs> you know, please. So, you know... Oh, but... But, um... Like, like, you know, what? I said this to... I was saying this to my buddy on the phone. You know, he is... Well, all right, let me put it this way. Wilder should have actually just fought a deserving pro boxer, you know, a, a, who deserves a title shot. That's who he should have fought. Not an undeserving, and an, an admittedly undeserving fighter who is a, is, He's not a, a pro boxer. He's a, a guy who happens to be licensed to be able to professionally box. Flat out. You know, the, the, this, this ain't his, you know, uh, he ain't in this like he should be. Um, he's just going through the motions, man. Just going through the motions. And this ain't some stupid stay busy fight. I'm tired of hearing that shit too. I'll get to that. But... 
Box Rec has Areola like near 50 something, right? But he is way below that. When I keep saying 75, I know you guys are being like, Box Rec has him at 50! Like, that means he's a good fighter, huh? That means they're, he, you know, Wilder's really fighting someone good. He's fighting the top 50 guy, you know? But you give fucking all those other fighters shit for fighting champions, for fighting top 10 fighters, for fighting fucking top 15 fighters. So I better see a whole bunch of videos shitting all over fucking Wilder. Now, where are they? Where are they? This fight's been announced for days. I don't see them. Oh, that's right. You're biased as fuck. That's right. You're biased as fuck, and you admitted it. You admitted it. You know, I forgot about that part. You know, so, yeah. But Boxrec has him at 50, right? And how, why he is below that is be, the only reason he's there is because of names. He fought Vitaly Klitschko. Even though he got fucking whooped, that gave him a lot of points. Okay? It did. It does. It's just how the algorithm, it's just how the algorithm works and all that. <clears throat> uh, Jamil McCline had a lot of points. <clears throat> Beating him, even if he's old and shot, gives you a lot of points. All right. Um, uh, Molina um, gives you a. Nah, nah, I didn't bring it up. Um, Minto. Beating Minto. Minto fought a lot of good names. So beating him gives you a nice amount of points. Alright? Uh, fighting Stavern twice gives you a good amount of points. It does. Alright, so because he has so many names on his resume, even though he never beat any, you know, he beat anything, uh, anyone good, but he has a lot of names on his resume, so it gives him points. Okay, but even with all those names, he's still only at 50. Now, imagine if they would have actually really gave the, if they would have gave the decision to Cassie, the rightful, uh, the, you know, the deserving winner of that fight. Uh, he would have draw, he would have plummeted. Uh, imagine if they would have gave it to Harper, the deserving winner of that fight. Again, he would have plummeted. That's why I'm saying he's more like 75 to 100 on box rec. If PBC didn't give this dude gift decisions because he has a name and they know, hey, we might need him for Wilder down the road, you know, or AJ down the road or something like that, um, more likely Wilder, but, you know, they need, you know, a, a PBC heavyweight down the road with a name. So they keep giving, they fucking rob deserving fighters and give the name fighter the decision. The house fighter. You know, I've probably seen more robberies on PBC in this last year than on any other network over the last four or five years. Um, that's no joke. We all know it, too. Um, they're fucking ridiculous. You know, robberies and bullshit stoppages to protect the house fighter. Um, totally bullshit. You know, if you support this fight, you're a fucking fanboy. Um, and, and probably much worse from the fucking comments I've read. Like, it, the fucking racial slurs out the ass. Um, it, it, it fucking, just anyone who says the slightest little criticism of Wilder, or even at Wilder's opponents, um, you know, so, I mean, you're, and you're just, it, you know, you admitted your bias, you know, admitted channels have admitted their bias, it, you know, when it comes to certain fighters, you know, they, that's all that matters, I, point blank, why would I ever watch you, you know, your, you know, your thoughts and words are trash to me since I know that they are so skewed from reality that me listening or anybody listening, we become less intelligent from listening to you unless we're only listening, well, I don't, so unless they are only listening to fucking laugh at you, you know, flat out, flat out. I mean, you, you fucking racist assholes 
uh, out there called Mike Tyson a coon. This man is not a fucking coon. All right, learn the definition of coon, you fucking assholes. He is no coon. Um, please, he beat, he cave your fucking skull, and you called him a fucking coon. Please go up to his face and say it. You know, please. He ain't no coon. Um, dude's the fuck a fucking G. You know, uh, you know, you know, you you know, you, you, you want to call call some people fucking coons and shit like that? Call Floyd a, fu a fucking coon. You know, and I'm not, I don't mean to say that in like a derogatory term. I'm talking about, you know, the way people want it, stereotypical way white people fucking want to, you know, you get it. I didn't, I didn't mean to call him a fucking coon. But, um, you know, just, you know, flashing all his money in cars, being a stereotypical what white people try to be calling fucking, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll call you the N-word when you act like that. I mean, he is that, you know. Well, because uh, Tyson is a Republican, he's a coon. That don't make you a coon. Well, because Tyson said uh, he thought Manny Pacquiao won, that made him a coon? What? You know, like, what the fuck are you talking about? How about your boy, Floyd Mayweather, who tried to put this man in prison for a rape he didn't commit? Mike Tyson fucked Floyd Mayweather's girlfriend. And when Floyd found out about it, he tried to force this girl to go to the police station to foul. Actually, he did convince her. She went. She went to the police station. Floyd had this girl, made her go to the police station, and foul a false rape charge. So to, to go to the police, she openly spread her fucking mouth, legs, and ass crack for fucking Tyson. Right, because Floyd apparently wasn't hitting it right. He probably wasn't hitting it at all. The guy's fucking homo, and we all know it, you know. But fucking, you know, if any, if he's fucking anyone, he's fucking one of them big muscle-bound bodyguards he got around, right? Um, and they're also they were fucking Miss Jackson. That's why she aborted the baby. Um, uh, no, yeah, I'm getting ignorant. Um, fucking, uh, he fucking tried putting Mike Tyson in prison. Sent that girl to jail. Or sent that girl to the police station and to tell the put the cops that Mike raped her. This is after Mike was out of jail for the other fucking bullshit rape charge, um, because he was he couldn't live with he, that was his way of getting revenge because he couldn't do anything to Tyson because Tyson was the king you know at the time he never could do anything to Mike. Mike would just smack him like a fucking flea, you know. Um, so. This girl goes to the police station. Mike Tyson's house gets raided, looking while they're because the, they're looking for evidence of a rape. All right, and eventually the story all fell apart and collapsed. And thank God this this man didn't have to do another day in jail for another false rape charge, right, or accusation charge, whatever. But what would you call someone? All right, put it this way. Alright, to, to the guy, you guys who are watching this and you hate my guts right now, right? Because I'm shitting on Floyd, I'm shitting on Wilder. Um, you fuck my girl. I make her go to the police and file a false rape charge on you. I'll call you back, Cam. And, and, uh, I make my girl go, and first of all, you, you could never touch my girl, I promise that. But, uh, for the sake of argument, you fuck my girl, and I find out about it. Instead of coming like a man, either by myself with a pistol or with 20 dudes to cave your head in, do whatever I want to do, or kick the bitch out the house, whatever I feel like doing, you know, um, if I want to take it out on her or you, whatever. But I send the girl to the police station and tell her to say that you raped her and she didn't voluntarily fuck you. And they come raid your house searching for evidence of a rape. What would you call me? What would you call me? Wouldn't you call me a snitch? I know it's not like, yeah, we committed a crime together and we got caught or I got caught. He got away, but I told where they can go find him so I could get out and I blamed it all on him. Right? Or some shit like that. I know that's like the you know, the definition of a snitch, but there's, you know, 
it's a little broader um, if you actually, you know, are in that shit. Floyd's a rat. He's a rat bastard. Right? He's a rat bastard. He tried to put an innocent man in prison for fucking his girl. That's a rat. That's a snitch. It's a snake, a rat, a rat bastard, a snitch, a stool pigeon, everything. You know, because if that girl did get on a stand and testify, it's the same as Floyd being on that stand and testifying. Why? Because he's forcing her. So it's basically Floyd on the stand because she's saying what Floyd told her to say. So she's just mouthing the words of Floyd Mayweather. You know, Floyd Mayweather's words. So, every time you guys run around going, That guy's a snitch! That YouTube channel is a snitch! So and so is a snitch! Your fucking idol's a snitch, you idiots! You know, please! You know, get a fucking life! You fake-ass street gangsters, please! You ain't never been in the fucking streets. You know, idiots, man. You know, your idol's the snitch. You worship a snitch. But you run around calling other people snitches. Like, how ironic, right? You called... And, and the reason that pisses me off so bad is because... he Obviously, everyone knows Tyson is my all-time fucking favorite fighter. Um, you have called... and uh, You have called Evander Holyfield! A coon, another one of my all-time favorite fighters. You've called him a coon because he thought a guy won a fight. He thought Manny Pacquiao beat Floyd Mayweather. Well, guess what? So did 50% of the world, you idiots. Maybe if you fucking, like, went outside your little bubble, you'd know this. Uh... Uh, Timothy Bradley. You called Tim Bradley a coon because he couldn't beat Manny Pacquiao. How does that make him a coon? It makes him a fucking soldier for getting in that ring and giving his putting his life on the line to try to accomplish his goals. I don't see none of y'all doing anything like that. You know? Like the disrespectful shit I see. You know? It's like, God, man. Like, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? You need to go to a fucking mental ward, get evaluated, get on your right medications, or get your fucking meds adjusted, or get back on your fucking meds. You know, because I know half you are on fucking psych meds. There's no way in hell you're not. And if you're not, it's probably because you're too poor to fucking go to the doctor. So save up a bit of money, go to the doctor, because you fucking need to, right? And then, once you get on the meds, meds and they stabilize you, and you can finally actually live in reality, you know, you can probably then, you know, uh... <laughs> You probably then, you know, um, uh, really see the world as it is. Instead of this, like, just the most delusional way that you see it. I can't even comprehend how you see it. I don't comprehend how you call Mike Tyson a coon. The dude's a G. I don't understand how you call Evander Holyfield a coon. The dude is a G. Same for Tim Bradley. And you've said it about countless others. You know... Uh, uh, the eighty uh, percent of the fucking audience in the MGM that night thought Manny Pacquiao won. And what? When they're walking out the door and say it, that 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 makes them something, something that makes them bad? No, no, no! Please, don't no, give me a fucking break. You know, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. You know. Then I, the me, I never do, I never did anything racist in my fucking life that I can remember anyway. Definitely not on the fucking YouTube channel. Um, and I get called uh, a racist because I, well, I got called a racist by dick in the butt fucking TV. Um, uh, because I don't give Triple G... Or I don't give Wilder, what was it? I, I didn't get, I don't give Wilder the same credit I give Triple G, so that makes me racist. Yeah, that's what it was. 
I mean, whoa. See what I'm talking about? Meds? Like, really. Like, pe people need meds. Um, or education. Meds or education, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe they took too many meds. I, I don't fucking know, man. I'm kind of clueless here. Uh, I just know they're screwy. Um, and, you know, I, I, and, you know, I, what, and I don't think Wilder has proven himself yet. It don't mean he can't. And if he does, I'll give him all the props in a row, but I don't think he's proven himself yet. Big whoop. I don't think a lot of fighters have proven themselves yet. I don't think Errol Spence has proven himself yet. Right? But I know Errol Spence wants to fight the best. I know he wants good fighters, though. Uh, I don't see that with Wilder. I don't see that with Wilder. Right? Like, if... If... Spence was just gifted a title, basically. You know, like if he was able to fight Ponomarev, I know he's fight. You know, it's Bundu, but I know I think he would have blew Ponomarev out the fucking water. But say he was able to fight him for a title, I don't think he would have sat there and fought top fifty fucking guys. You know, top thirty guys. I think he would have went for unifications and shit. You know. Look at Thurman, got a belt. Well, hopefully you don't pull out this Porter fight. But if he goes through with the Porter fight, you see what I'm saying? Look at Porter. I mean, you know, Wilder don't act like that. Look at Triple G. Look what he's doing. Fought more top ten rank, more ring top ten fighters in the last three years than any fighter in all of boxing. Okay? And, uh, you know, then, like, Wilder had a gold-paved path to the heavyweight title. You know, Vitaly retired, Al Heyman goes to the WBC, I, I, I need Wilder to get a title. You know, have these two fight, Wilder's fighting the winner. The winner. One of these little short guys, we're going to have Breland come in, teach him how to circle and jab, circle and jab, circle and jab. And that's what happened. And he couldn't even knock the guy out. The, the one top ten guy he fought who was sick as fuck, couldn't even knock him out. The one top ten guy he fought couldn't knock him out. Well, he, he fought two, I believe. I think Malik Scott was a ring top ten fighter, but that was obviously one of the fucking funniest dives, like clear dives we have ever, you know, not ever seen, but seen in recent years. You know, it's really hard to take. It was like Tyson versus Selden type dive, right? If you think Selden took a dive, then you better sure shit say Scott took a dive. You know, um, maybe it wasn't as bad as Abner Cotto, but it, it was just as bad as Selden. They're all dives, like clear dives, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, he, he gets a gold path to the title. Then don't go after anyone good. He has voluntary defenses so he can fight and challenge anyone he wants. Who's he challenge? Who's he challenge? Bums. Molina, who almost beat him. Almost knocked him the fuck out. Do a pause. Almost got the fight stopped. And literally um, <laughs> gave him a run for his money with one punch. And then Spilka, who was basically, uh, who was, you know, at least even on the cards or up on the cards and started to get a, a little too cocky and kind of just walking straight in instead of, you know, coming in with head movement and behind the jab. And, you know, got a fucking great right hand landed on him. Um, but, you know, he was getting all Matrix trying to, like, just, you know, show off, and it cost him. Uh, he learned from that. You know, as a matter of fact, I'd rather see a Spilka rematch than this fight. Honestly. Because I bet Spilka would beat him in a rematch. I, I would I would really think Spilka would beat him in a rematch. Because he wouldn't get all cocky and start showing off at the end. He would just put that work in. He might get robbed, because they were going to rob him. But he you know, might get robbed, but he would win. You know what I'm saying? And, um, like, Wilder versus Areola, too. You got to think of this. Areola is six. Six foot three, right? He's the same size as Pavekin, right? Same height. So he has been in camp for a guy the same height. So yeah, he is six foot three. Because I remember saying he's in, he's 
transferring to a guy who's the same height and uh, a, a little bit longer of a reach. His reach... 76... 76 inches, I think it is. Yeah, 76. Six foot three, 76 inches versus a six foot seven. Six foot seven guy with an 83 inch reach. And the guy, like, has zero body fat on him. Shredded. Like I said, built like a fucking brick shit house. Big, gigantic, ripped. And then you got a little. You got a. a, a and, first of all, he's coming off the best, Wilder is coming off the best camp of his life, um, and Fat Boy gets five to six weeks to train. Real level playing field, huh? Real level playing field, huh? You know? Um, what, uh, Wilder's had like eight months in the fucking gym. This guy's had fucking eight months eating fucking food. Fat burger and fucking nachos and cheese. And nothing else. Coronas, fat burger, nachos, cheese, El Polo Loco, deep fried Snickers, deep fried fucking ho hoagies, with all that, you know, everything, man. KFC buckets, four or five at a time, you know, family size, all by himself. His kid or family even reaches for one, they get backhanded out the fucking passenger window. You know, please. You know. That's the guy he's fighting. And people are going to be like, Well, Wilder deserves credit because he's fighting a bigger guy. Ariel is heavier. I've heard that argument before, right? Who's bigger? Wilder or Ariola? You know, you got to think about it. Ariola's heavier, right? <laughs> but there's the term functional weight. Right? Functional weight? Now, is literally 80 pounds of fucking blubber? Is that functional weight? Is that going to help you in a boxing match? No. Would like 4%, 3%, 2%, who knows his percent of body fat water is extremely shredded. Um, who's, who's bigger? Who's bigger? Please, don't be telling me, well, he fights a guy who weighs more, so that's, you know, more, that's impressive. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You know, when you're, when you're fucking, uh, what, four inches taller, um, when you're fucking seven inch reach advantage, you're shredded, uh, you've been in camp for months, the other guy has just been sitting on a fucking couch doing nothing. But the, the, the going up against the fat so is impressive because he weighs more. <laughs> like, I'm tired of hearing, well, heavyweights should get credit because, you know, they don't have a, a division. They have to fight guys heavier than them. If... A guy like Povetkin is fighting a guy like, you know, say a 220-pound heavyweight, like old Deontay Wilder, see what he comes in at. 220-pound Deontay Wilder fighting like a 250-pound Klitschko. Oh, yeah, that weight, he gets credit for that because that guy was in just as good a shape and had 30 pounds of solid fucking muscle on him. That, yeah, okay, you get credit for that. But when I got 30 pounds on you, but he, he literally, like, every time he fucking takes a fast twitch, his fucking tit slaps him in the face. That That's not fucking impressive. It's fucking sad that the guy's even fighting him. You know, it's pathetic he's even in the ring with the guy. So please, man. It's fucking ridiculous. But I get called fucking names and racist and all that dumb shit for fucking only stating the obvious in the boxing world about Triple G is a better fighter and has beaten better competition. You know, what's the problem? Like, if that's fucking, that's, that's proven factually. You know, that is, that's a fact. You can't, like, say that's because I'm biased. That's a fucking fact, man. You know, 
And, uh, you know, <sighs> shadow boxing today again. He, he said this best whenever Dick in the Butt fucking TV was talking about, uh, uh, call me racist for not giving Wilder the same props as I give Triple G. Um, <clears throat> which is stupid because nobody gives them the same props. Uh, and people then started making other videos on it. And Mr. Boxing today put it pretty perfectly. Um, and, and Max Bear told me about this and I went and watched the video. He said, if them two were in the same gym... Wilder and Golovkin, if they were in the same gym together, all right, like uh, trained together for a month or so, or just whatever, they were in the same camp for six months, Golovkin would be teaching Wilder how to fight better, and it would never be the other way around. Wilder would not be teaching Golovkin, okay? Just like Triple G taught Barrera and teaches many others right now. Okay? You ever see a vid or hear a story or hear a fighter, you know, tell you a story or interview about Wilder uh, teaching them? Fuck no! Because it, it, he don't seem to even be able to learn. You know, learn how to fucking, you know, the fundamentals of boxing, let alone fucking teach them. You know, please. Oh, and then the whole, the whole Pavekin thing, anyway, before I end this real quick. Uh, the water protocol, one microgram after March 1st. If you're under that, it has to be reviewed. Alright? If you were over one microgram after March 1st, you failed. Pavekin was not. He was under one microgram, and it needed to be reviewed. And they're already done with the testing, and it's it, that's it right there. You know, WADA protocol and WADA is going to be favorable, and, and and instead of just getting this fight in August like Wilder should have done, he's scurrying to fight the bum of bums. The bum of bums. That's it. And that's it, right? <laughs> and, 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 you know, he obviously should have waited for the rolling, but if he didn't want to, he could have picked a better opponent. Could have picked a better opponent. Um, I mean, shit. I, I bet Ortiz would have, would have, I, I would have bet anything that if that offer got sent to Ortiz, he would have taken a five-week camp in order to fight Wilder. And I would have still bet on Ortiz to win. Dead serious. Dead serious. And the reason all these guys, maybe not all of them, maybe some of their guys would have been like, let's wait a while and work, you know, just keep honing our skills. But someone like Ortiz, he's taking the first title, world title shot he gets. And a lot of them would. Because the old saying in boxing, you never turn down uh, you never turn down a world title shot because you never know what's going to happen in that very next fight. Your very next fight, you might get knocked out. And then you come back against two scrubs, tuning up. Uh-oh, you're, you know, you're punch weary. Uh, and then boom, a bum knocks you out. Now you're totally thrown off the rankings. Ain't no one even talking about you. And you gotta try to work your way up, and now there's some new kingpin on top, and he beats the living shit out of you before you even get your title shot, and then you're done. You know, you have six more fights, lose three, retire. You know, people don't take them risks. They're, you get a world title shot, it's a rule in boxing. You get a world title shot, you take it, because you never know what's gonna happen in your next fight. It's been that way since the beginning of boxing man if you can fight for the title you fight for the title it don't matter under what circumstances you can you go for it you go for it you know and um you know i was talking to uh ring iq he has the channel you know he makes the funny sounds with the smiley it puts the faces and stuff on the uh screen i can't remember the whole name of his channel maybe it's ring iq boxing talk or something uh i just know him as ring iq um, but I, I, I wanted to leave a big comment, but I don't like typing, so I'm just going to address it right here. Um, he was saying you can't criticize, um, 
You can't criticize Triple G without criticizing Wilder or you're biased and, you know, um, vice versa. You can't criticize Wilder without criticizing Triple G or you're biased. Um, and if you do, it's a double standard. Total bullshit, in my opinion. You know, he can have his opinion. I have mine. I think that's a crock of shit. Um, and I, I just commented with him, and I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? The fucking... <clears throat> and uh, people were talking about... People were bringing up in the comments, well, Triple G's fought in the more top ten fighters than a a any, you know, anyone out, out there, uh, ring top ten fighters. And, you know, add that with fucking six top 15 box rec fighters um, on top of those ring top 10 fighters all in the last three and a half years. And he was like, well, Golovkin's been champion longer, so it gave him more time to fight all those fighters. And he's a fan of Wilder and Triple G, so IQ, I know you know this, or you should at least. Anyway, I think you do, you should. Triple G never fought a top 10 opponent until he came to the USA. So all those years he held that belt over in Germany, he never fought one. He didn't fight a top 10 fighter until we got to HBO, bro. So that's three years. You know? Three years. In three years, he fought seven top 10 ring-ranked uh, middleweights. When he fought them, they were ranked in the Ring Magazine, top ten. And six, well, three and a half. And, and, and six top 15 guys, right, boxer, like right outside top ten. You know, Willie Monroe Jr., who was like 12, I think, and uh, uh, Wade was like 11. You know, those guys are all in the, like, top 15. <clears throat> and he's feared, all right, and he is feared and he can get you know if, if triple g's fighting more ring ranked guys than anyone in all of boxing in the past three years and he's one of the most avoided fighters in all of boxing maybe the most avoided how the fuck can't deontay how the fuck can't deontay deontay beats the Vern. He won the title January 2015, all right, like a year and a half ago. What, in a, a, a year and a half? Triple G had four, <laughs> think about it, in three and a half years he fought seven top ten fighters and five or six other top 15 fighters. So just cut that in half. Does does Wilder have anywhere near that? Could he fight? Uh, could, why didn't Wilder? And they have basically the same amount of fights, right? Like, there's a few fight difference. Why the fuck don't Wilder? Why didn't Wilder fight a top ten guy? You know, like two or three top ten guys, uh, or top fifteen guys before the title fight with Stavern. Why after he beat Stavern did he go after the worst guys possible? Triple G is chasing. He starts from, he goes, number one, will you fight me? No. Number two, will you fight me? No. Number three, will you fight me? Sometimes it's a yes. You see what I'm saying? He goes down the line. Deontay Wilder, he takes the garbage can of rankings, empties it, scrape, goes to the bottom, takes the razor blade, and scrapes the fucking chewed gum off of it, and that's what he fights. He don't even bother picking up that pristine piece of gold jewelry on top and putting that in the ring with him. You know? Or that silver jewelry or bronze top 10 contender type material. See what I'm saying? He goes for the, the worst material at the bottom of the garbage can. That's a, the, the, don't, you don't say you can't. You have, you're biased and stupid. You said you're biased and stupid if you criticize one or the other. I, I, I think it's biased and stupid to say that. I think you're just fans of both of them. That's all. You know? 
It's that simple. And you don't want to, you just like them both a lot. So you make excuses for Wilder. That's all. You know, plain and simple. Why didn't Pavekin wait for the rolling? Why didn't Pavekin offer the fight to other fighters? Why didn't he say, hey, eight week camp? Why did it have to be a, a short week camp? Why did it have to be a short, short camp? Why? You know, PBC has dates everywhere. They could have just, fights get rescheduled. Oh, we got a good, we can get a good name. We can get Jennings. Push it back two weeks. He needs a full camp. Let's get a great fight going here. Get full promotion. Fuck it. Push it back ten. Let's get real promotion. Like, come on, man. Don't make, you're making excuses for your fighter. You are being biased because you like Deontay Wilder, so you're making excuses for him, dude. It's a, you know, it's plain and simple. Plain and simple. You know, uh, when you have a guy literally gunning after every champion, literally going after trying to fight the best every time out, fighting the best guy he can fight every time out, fight literally has the, you know, according to Ring Magazine, he has the, you know, the the most solid resume of any fighter in the last three and a half years. He might not have fought the best fighter or anything like that, but he has fought more consistently top level fighters than anyone. Anyone. More top ten fighters and champions than anybody in all of boxing. You know? Think about it. Wilder, this is going to be his fourth Voluntary. <laughs> Not one top ten guy in all four of those. And don't tell me one of them wouldn't have fought him. And in any of the four. Don't say a top ten guy wouldn't have fought him in any of the four. Don't tell me a top fifteen guy wouldn't have fought him in any of those four. So how are they the same? Because you, you said Triple G and Wilder are exactly the same career-wise. No, they're not. And even stylistically, they're completely fucking different. One guy is extremely fundamentally flawed, and one guy is extremely fundamentally flawed. Just because they both have a lot of knockouts don't mean dick. Who are you doing it against, and how? Are you being hurt in the process? Did Molina... Did you, did you see uh, Proxa... Or fuck, who's the who, who's the worst guy Triple G fought since he came to HBO? I mean, no, did you see fucking Ishida uh, knocking Triple G all over the ring, having him wobbling all over the place, about to fall over, and all he had to do was throw one more punch, and the fight would have been over. But Molina instead just stood there like, oh fuck, Al's gonna be so pissed if I throw. So he just stood there. And then the other time he walks up and just ties ties him up. He has a, a wa wobbly wilder in front of him. Like, Ugh. bitch tits Molina wobbled him. And then ties him up. Don't even attack him. All he had to do was zing him. And he was out of there. And don't say he don't know how to finish because we just watched him finish someone. He knows how to attack. But he was he was told. Go and make it look good. You don't beat the man. And when he popped him with a good shot, he was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. You know, come on, man. What guy has the world champion, the heavyweight world champion, wobbling all over the ring, and they don't jump on him like a fucking lion on a zebra? Please. They, they throw caution to the wind and like, oh, this is my fucking chance to have my family set for life. Instead, Molina did Nothing. Just stared and was like, you all right, bro? Got your legs under you yet? You ready? You got your legs yet, bro? You ready? You good? You good? Yeah, come on, man. You know, you know what it is. Fucking, fucking, uh, not rigged, but, you know, like damn near a setup, you know? It's just someone. It kind of rigged. I mean, I I don't think Molina was told. Yeah, you know, I, I think he was told not to win. Because why wouldn't you attack when it's the world heavyweight title right at your fingertips? All you gotta do is throw one or two punches, and it's yours. You know. I don't know. Who knows? Molina can answer, but he probably never will. Um, because he's getting you know, 
I, and I, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, they're nothing alike, dude. They're nothing alike. Their career is nothing alike. The way they approach their career is nothing alike. So uh, I don't get it. I don't get it at all how you think you can't. You have to criticize both or you can't criticize either. I just think you like them both. And you don't want to criticize either. And you don't want to hear anyone else criticize either of them. I don't care if someone criticizes Triple G. But you better come correct or I'll come with a rebuttal. Um, plain and simple. And if you come and tell me Wilder is the greatest thing in, since sliced bread, I'll come with a rebuttal to that too. You know? Plain and simple. You know? Um, it, it is what it is, man. Nothing alike. Way too long of a video. Got to get to a hangout. I'm sure Maxwell Bear is mad, pissed at me. Uh, but th 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 this this whole this whole Pavekian areola and you know, this shit is fucking pissing me off. So wanted to rant a bit. Um, let me know what you think. Answer that question though about the three three uh, fighters with Wilder and uh, Wilder and uh, uh, Areola. Their three best wins each, and whose three do you think are better? Just curious. Just curious what people say. Um, Thunder on boxing talk. Peace.